Welcome to the Word 2013 Things to Know webcast. This session is designed to show you tips that will help you work more effectively with Word. And even though I am using Word 2013, these tricks can also be used in 2010 and some older versions of Word. This session will move quickly um, in order to cover the topics within the one hour time frame that is allotted today. If you do have any questions, I will try to address those at the end of the session. So please hold those for the end of the session and then we can have a small chat session at the end. All right, so I have opened up a blank Word document on my screen and I am going to um, talk about the setting up your Word so that it works more effectively with for you. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was setting up and fixing some of the default settings that are in Microsoft Word. Um, and you notice at the top you have your ribbons, the home, the insert, the design, and they're categorized based on um, groups or sections on the ribbons. So if you notice on the home ribbon, there's a clipboard section for copying and pasting. There's a font section for formatting. There's a paragraph section, and some of the sections in the bottom right-hand corner will have a little button in that section. And if I click on the little button to the right of paragraph, I get the paragraph dialog box. Now this allows, if you remember from the past Word versions, this allows you to go in and set your um, you know, your alignment and then basically your spacing. And one of the things that they did with 2013 um, is that they, they changed the line spacing from single to multiple. And this does drive a lot of people crazy. So they would like to fix it so that every time you open up a Word document, it's set for single spacing. So we're going to fix that. What we're going to do is where it says line spacing is we're going to click on the drop down arrow and choose single. And then the other thing you have to fix is the spacing before, which is zero, that's okay, but after paragraphs, because that'll give you more spacing between paragraphs than you may want. So I'm going to take that down to zero also. So I'm going to have the spacing before and after set to zero line spacing to single. Now I want to set this as the default for all Word documents because I don't want to have to do this every time I go into Word. So down at the bottom there's a little button that says set as default and I'm going to do this for all documents based on the normal doc template. So what this is going to do is it's going to set it for all Word documents from now on so that when you type it's automatically set for single each time you open up a new document. The other default that a lot of people like to set because they don't like the font or the size, um, they don't like the Calibri font and they don't like the um, size is they, they want to set the default for your font. So again, in the bottom right hand corner of that section is a little button. Now not all the sections on the ribbons are going to have, have those buttons, but when they do that brings up the dial box. And I'm going to quickly change this to Arial. A lot of times people like Arial or Time Roman as the default. I'm going to say change the size to 12. And again, in the bottom left hand corner, I'm going to hit set as default, all documents based on the normal template, and hit OK. So now, every time I open up a new document, it will be Arial, it will be the size that I want. You can also do that on the page layout ribbon under page setup, click on the button, and you can set your margins if you want. Now the default for the margin settings is, well, <clears throat> it'll come up soon, <laughs> unless it froze. We hope. We hope, but it's Microsoft, right? We may be frozen. May take a Okay. Anyways, when you bring up the page setup dialog box, your margin settings will be in there. And you can also change your margin settings um, if, for instance, you print a lot on letterhead and you need your margin setting to be an inch and a half. 
and you'd like the bottom to be a half inch, you can then set that, here it comes. So the defaults are an inch all the way around, and if I wanted to change that, I can. And then I could hit the set as default button, and this one I would just have to say yes if I wanted to change that for all of my documents. So again, you can set up your defaults, and then once you've set them, you're ready to go every time you open a document. The other thing that I want to mention is on the view ribbon, if you click on the view ribbon, you want to make sure that you check the ruler box because that will bring up your ruler for your document. And you need to see your ruler when you're working with your indents or your tab settings. Um, you can see that you automatically have half inch tabs when you get a document, but later today we'll, I'll show you how to set your own tab settings. And if you are using 2010, there is a little button above the scroll bar that you click on and it will also, it's called the view ruler button, it will view the ruler also by clicking on that. So either way you can bring up your ruler and that way your ruler is showing and then it should be that way too whenever you open up any new documents. The ribbons can also be, um, can hide, you can hide your ribbons by, if you double click on the ribbons at the top, the tabs, it will also lock the ribbons and hide them. So if you want more room and then when you need the ribbon, you just click on the, um, the tab at the top, it'll bring the ribbon up and then when you click back down here, it'll disappear. Sometimes you accidentally do that. So if you double click on the ribbon again, it will lock it in place and keep it up so that you can then go through the ribbon and find what you're looking for. Uh, down below, you have what's called the status bar. And if you click on that status bar, you can actually add things to it. There are a lot on there, but if you notice there's some, like if you work with sections, you can add the section um, so it tells you what section you're in. You can also add line number to know what line you're on or your caps lock. If your caps lock key is on, um, it will tell you that your caps lock is on at the bottom. So you can actually customize that status bar for yourself too. Now the other thing that I like to talk about is what's called the quick access toolbar. And a lot of people don't utilize that toolbar as much. If you notice this up here in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, it only has three commands on it. It has save, undo, and redo. And if you click on the drop-down arrow to the right of it, you do have other commands on there that you can add. For instance, if you click new, every time you click on that button, you get a new document instead of having to go to file, new, and going to the templates to get it. Open you can add that to open a document. Uh, quick print, that will send it to right to the printer. The <clears throat> spelling and grammar, um, you have that, so you can put that on your quick access toolbar. And then they, they have this touch mouse mode. Actually, what that is, is when you click on it, if you have a touch screen, it actually will make the ribbon wall, um, bigger and the icons larger, so you can actually touch them with your finger. Otherwise, if it's set to the mouse, it's just you clicking on them with your mouse. And if you want that, if you don't want it, then you can also right click on it and remove it from your toolbar. The other thing you can do is you can actually add other commands to this toolbar. I'm going to go to more commands and it brings up the customize the quick access toolbar window. And then I'm going to go and change popular all commands. And then you can customize the commands that you want to add. For instance, I like the C's command. So if I type the letter C, I can get to the C. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to choose the um, close command here. It's, it's close with the yellow folder. Now, some of the commands, you may have more than one option to choose from. You just kind of have to send that command over to see which one it is and if you like it or not like save as, a lot of people like save as. Um, so you can then send the command over to the right. Another one in Word, page setup. A lot of people like the page setup command. So um, right here, I'm gonna choose the um, one, now see, I'm not sure which one I want, so I'll just, I'll just pick the one with the little icon next to it. If that's not the one I want, I can take, you know, change it later. 
then I can reorganize these. I can move them up. So I'm going to do new, open, close, save. I'm going to put save as underneath that. Um, I have quick print. I have page setup, spell check. You just organize them the way you want. Another thing you can do too at the very top is what's called a separator. And you can click on that and you can put a separator to separate your little icons and your little um, commands that you have on here in groups. And you can actually put that separator wherever you want it. So I'm gonna kind of put it in here, just like separate the printing icons from the open close icons. Um, if I don't want it, I can remove that one, take it out. Finally, the thing I'm going to do here is check this box to show the toolbar below the ribbon so that you can see the commands and you have access to them. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Notice that the command quick access toolbar is right here. And if I want to bring up, that's the one I wanted, the page setup dialog box. I have all of my commands right here. So when I want to close a document, I can hit the close button. And when I want a new one, I hit the new button. And I can quickly access what I need using that toolbar. You can also right click on the ribbon and add buttons to the toolbar. For instance, if you use the show hide button, you could click on that and add it. If you like to, you know, if you want something from the insert menu, like symbols, if you use a lot of symbols on the right hand side, I'm going to right click and add that to the quick access toolbar. But later, if you need to access your symbols, you can use it and it's right there for you. So it's called quick access toolbar so that you can quickly access the commands that you need. So now I'm going to start talking about some of the features that are in Word. And I'm going to type a little command here. It's going to be equals rand parenthesis, the number two, which represents the number of paragraphs that I want. And then the number um, five, which represent, represents how many sentences I want in that paragraph. So after I type that command and then I hit enter, I'm going to automatically get two paragraphs of text with information about it. And they provide useful information that you can read. Um, and if the more paragraphs you do, the more information it'll give you. So now I have the um, information that I want. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on the find, talk about the find feature. Now, the find feature has changed dramatically in Word 2013. And in the home ribbon on the far right hand side, if I click the find button, it brings up what's called a navigation pane. And so it's not the usual window that you're used to, though we can still access that window. And I'll show you how to do that in a, in a minute. But let's say I'm looking for the word you. So I'm looking for the word you, and then it automatically highlights the word you in the document. But it's not selecting the word. It's what's called a reading highlight. You also will notice that it is selecting the word you and your. And if I had the word like layout, it would be selecting the word you in layout. So I don't want it to select um, any other word form. I want it to select the word you only. So I'm going to click on the little drop down arrow to the right of the navigation window here. And I'm going to go to options. And it's going to bring up my options window. And I'm going to say, find whole words only, meaning that I only want it to locate the word by itself. There are other things you can do, too. You can, you can also find words that are case sensitive. You can find word forms that sound the same, T-H-E-I-R, T-H-E-R-E. See, saw, seen, um, so sounds like, so you can, you can find and um, search for other things. But right now I'm going to do find whole words only, click OK. I'm going to type the word you in there again. This time it's only going to highlight the word you by itself. Now, the other thing is the, I'm going to click on this little drop down arrow and I'm going to go to what's called the advanced find. That brings up the find window that you're probably used to in the past. If I click on the little more button, 
will expand the find window to give me those options that I saw earlier. And I also can search for things like paragraph um, you know, marks. I can search for section breaks or page breaks in a document. You could even go so far as to search for formatting um, fonts and, and, and tabs in your document also. But now, if I click on find in main document, now there's this, it says find in and reading highlight. Well, the find in, when I hit find in main document and close this, now what this has done is it has truly selected the word. The highlighting just shows me where the word is in the document. The selecting selects the word so that if I want to make the word bold or unbold, it's truly selected. And the reading highlight is not a selection um, option. When I type the word view here and I get the yellow in here, it's not, it's not selected the word. So if I hit bold, it's not going to bold the word it's only going to bold the word that I was on, and it doesn't it doesn't bold the whole thing because we're not selected. So there's a difference between the two. The other thing with the reading highlight is that if you go to print this, it does not. Um, I'm going to add the print preview and print. It does not show up on the page when you print, whereas when you have the actual highlighter here. So the find in will, but the highlighter here, when I click and drag over the text, that's a true highlighter. So that if I went to print this, it would show up and like as, as though I took a highlighter and highlighted the text for me. So there's a difference between the true highlighter, and I'm just going to do no color and take that out. And um, hit escape to turn it off. So you just a different type of find feature now. Now, what you can do if you want is you can click on the drop down arrow up here where the find is on the home ribbon. You can right click on advanced find and add that to the quick access toolbar. So when you do click on the binoculars, you do get the find window and you don't get that navigation window on the left. So if you don't like that navigation window, add the advanced find to your quick access toolbar or hit the F5 key and the F5 key will bring up your find, your replace, and your go-to. So I know when you're working with the new version of Word and you just went to the find and you got green on the left, you were confused and saying, I don't understand the difference between this. So, um, so now you know that the find is a navigation find and that the advanced find is the find that you were used to in the past. So I hope that that helps you when you're working um, with the find feature. And then when you do hit find, you also have the replace tab. So you can still hit replace and do the same thing that you used to do in the past. All right. So now down at the bottom of the page, I'm going to just um, misspell uh, the word produced. And notice that um, it puts the red line underneath, which is your spell check. Of course, I can right click on the word and then I get a suggestion of correct spellings and I'm going to choose the correct spelling to fix it. You probably are familiar with the green, which is grammar. And um, so you, you will see the green. So you have red and green, but now you have a new one. You have a new one and it's called um, the contextual spelling. And now they call it, in, in 2010, they call it contextual spelling. In 2013, they call it frequently confused words. So when you see that blue line underneath, that means that you're not using the right word form. So instead of, you know, cause you always say, should I use, is it two O's or is it one O? And it's actually one O. So if I right click on the word loose, it's gonna bring up the correct suggestion for me so that I, I pick the right word form for the sentence that I'm typing. Where that is, is if you go to file, you go to um, options and you go to proofing, You'll notice right here it says check spelling as you type. That's your red line. Um, you have your grammar, and now you have your fr frequently confused words. Um, I'm sorry, I'm chuckling on that one. I just think that's kind of funny. But um, the contextual spelling in 2010—that's the—that's 
that's what it's called in 2010. So that's where you get the blue line. So now you've got red, blue, and green. So maybe someday they'll come up with another color too. Now we have, um, and also your autocorrect options button is right here. So your autocorrect, if you use your autocorrect, it's here. And you can, um, if I went to quick access toolbar and I went to all commands, if you did use the autocorrect a lot in the past, you could also add that to your, um, your quick access toolbar. I'm going to do the one that doesn't have the icon next to it because I know that that's the one I want. And I'm going to close it. And when I click on that little circle, it's automatically going to bring up my autocorrect. And this is when it fixes things. Like if you notice, it may fix the words when you type them. It will fix them. For instance, if I type the word the and type it, it fixes the word for me. Um, you may have noticed in the past that if you type the letter C with parentheses, you get the copyright symbol. But if you, I don't know if you know this, but if you hit your backspace key, it will automatically change that back to a C in parentheses. So when you're doing like ABC and you need to fix that, you can. Um, so anytime it does do that for you, you can backspace um, right away to fix that if you don't like it. Later, I'm going to show you how you can also create your own um, shortcuts for certain symbols if you want. And it'll, like things when you type, like if you type grocery list, it capitalizes the G in grocery. But if you hover over the, the capitalized letter, you will get a little smart tag that comes up that you can click on the drop down arrow and you can say undo automatic capitalization if you do not want it to capitalize um, from this point down. Now, if you choose undo, it turns it off just for this particular instance. If you choose stop, it actually turns it off. So you would then have to go into the autocorrect window and recheck it if you do want it to work. That feature is good because it does capitalize after periods. And um, so if you wanted to turn it off for this particular instance, and then every time you type your list, you can see that it's not capitalizing um, the names anymore, the, the first letter. So it can be turned off for certain things. The same with the automatic numbering when you start to type. If you don't want that on for that particular instance, you can undo the automatic numbering and then you can type your text yourself and then that way you have control of the numbering and you can turn it off um, if you don't want it. If you do turn it off accidentally, like stop it instead of undo, just go back here. You would go to auto as you type and then you would just check the automatic number list. Um, you would also under um, auto form, you could type you know, the autocorrect, capitalizing the first letter of sentences, then you can turn it back. Um, some other things that you probably notice that it does is like if you do like fractions, it will change the fractions, but it doesn't do all of them. It only does certain ones. So if, again, if you hit your backspace key and then that way your other fractions would match, um, you can fix it right away without having to do anything or turning it off. It does, you know, superscript or subscript ordinals, and um, it does is does that type of stuff. The other thing that I'm going to do with the autocorrect is I'm going to automatically create a divider line in my document, and I'm going to do that by typing the dash three times. If I do one, two, three, and then I hit enter, I'm going to get a solid line all the way across when you want to create a divider line in your document when you're doing memos or if you're just creating a divider on the screen and you can't format it because it's not a graphic line that you've drawn but yet and you don't have to use the underline key to go all the way across it automatically does it for you now if I hit backspace right away it will turn it into three dashes but there's some other ones that you can do too three equal signs will give you a double underline Three pound signs will give you a thick line border. Three asterisks give you a dotted line all the way across. 
And the final one is the little tilde, which is above the tab key. So if I do that one, three of those, I will get a wavy line. So if you need a divider line on your screen, you can just type it three times, hit enter, and it's gone. Now, <clears throat> if I want to get rid of it, eat it and just get rid of it. But again, so that was three dashes. Pulls, pounds, three asterisks. A nice little feature to do to use when you want to just get a line all the way across your screen. So that's some of the autocorrect features. Now I want to talk about some quick selecting techniques. Um, Everybody selects in Word. Once you type Word, you have to select the text in order to um, format it or copy paste it, whatever you want to do with it. A lot of people click and drag to highlight, which is fine. Um, just know that when you click and drag, you can't pick up where you left off because if you try to pick up where you left off, you end up moving your text. You have to start from the beginning. You can also hold your shift key down and click on the down arrows or the right arrow or the left or the top arrow, whichever direction you're going, as you hold the shift key to select. Some other selecting techniques that you can do if you want to select a word, just double click on the word. If you want to select a paragraph, put your mouse in the center of the paragraph, click three times, one, two, three. It'll highlight the entire paragraph. If you want to select a sentence, hold your control key down, click on top of the sentence, and it will automatically select the entire sentence up until the period. So hold the control key down and click once on the sentence. Now the other thing that happens too, you probably are noticing that the um, formatting toolbar shows up when you automatically select your text, which is good because if you're not on the home ribbon at the time, you don't have to click away from the text to go home and then go back. But now that I've left the selected text and gone back to it, the ribbon disappears, the little uh, formatting ribbon disappears, but I can right click and, and bring it up and it'll bring up above the shortcut menu. You can also select the entire document, control A will select the entire document on your screen. And if you wanted to increase your font size, you could do that. You can also um, select non-adjacent words. So I can double click on a word, hold my control key down, and as I hold the control key down, I can select words that are non-adjacent. This is good when you're doing, like if you have some headings in your document, so if I type introduction, and then if I go down here and I type background, want to select the word introduction, hold my control key down, select the word background, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and format them both at the same time. So I can pick my font, I can pick my font size, or I can use the, the um, increased font size, the large A or the small A. Now one of the things about using the large A and the small A is it's increasing the font size based off of the numbers that are in the list. And the other thing you notice, it has that live preview. So that as, you, as you hover over the fonts or the um, font size, it shows you what size it is. But when I use these buttons or this, I've got large gaps in between the sizes. So a little trick is to hold the control key down on your keyboard. Use the bracket keys to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. There's a open bracket and a closed bracket while you hold the control key down will increase the font size on your screen but what it does is it increases the font size one point at a time so if i hold that down it, it's decreasing it and if i use the open bracket it is increasing it and i can visually see what it looks like on my screen and actually choose the font size that i want 
The other thing that you have is you also have your change case button. Um, there's a, a little shortcut for that one. Shift F3 will make it all uppercase. Shift F3 will make the text all lowercase. Shift F3 will also do, then it'll toggle to um, sentence case, meaning it capitalizes the first letter of the sentence. Um, under the change case, you can also capitalize each word. Toggle case means that it does the opposite. So if it's um, capitalized, it makes it smaller. And if it's, you know, lowercase, it makes it larger. But shift at three will toggle between upper, lower, and sentence case. Then you have your bold, if you want to make it bold, your italics your underline. Now with the underline, you can choose different underline styles. You can also go down to the underline color and make the color different than the text color. You have your font color over here. I'm going to make this uppercase. You have your font color over here, so you can pick a font color. But then you can also go to gradient and also change that, that font color depending on what you pick. So um, if, you, if you pick a color and then you go here and you choose a gradient style, it'll change it to um, the different colors depending on what you, what you want to pick. Um, it seems to be defaulting to blue, so I don't know, but I'll just go with that. And notice that um, the blue, how it has, like it's lighter and then darker in the middle. I don't know if that's something you you, you use or not. If not, you can just go back to the solid color. Now, I'm going to select the first paragraph. Again, I clicked three times. You do have your selection zone over here where you can, when it points to the right, you can select. You can click, you can click twice and it'll highlight the text. You can click over here to highlight a line. And if you click in the selection zone three times, it's a document. So there are many ways to select text in your document. I'm going to select the first paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and make it bold and just change the um, change the font. Well, I'm just going to change the font color um, and maybe I'll change the font and maybe I'll change the size. So I'm, and I'm going to use my bracket keys. Now, I want to maybe, let's say you want to call this text Say you were putting it there to the right of this graph at the bottom. Maybe you're copying and pasting it into another document. So I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to choose the paste option. Now with the paste options, when you paste, it's not just a simple paste anymore. You'll notice the little icons that appear. And those little icons allow you to paste it to keep the formatting. But if you are trying to match the format of the document that you're pasting in, you can choose the second option that says Merge Formatting. And if you notice, it matches with the text that I just pasted into. And the same thing, Keep Text Only, if you didn't want the formatting to, to be over. So now, when I copied and pasted this here, it matches this paragraph and I don't have to highlight it and try to figure out, okay, what font is it? What size is it? You know, you can see that this is the font size and now when I copy it in here, it picks zero and the little smart tag will come up in case you just that you want to change that at any point. You want to keep the original formatting that you had or merge the formatting with the, with the paragraph that you're and into. This is great to use when you're copying and pasting into multiple documents and you need to quickly um, format it to match the document that you're pasting it into. All right, um, I'm going to select this first paragraph again um, and on the formatting toolbar it has this little word art feature that you can choose from so I'm just going to pick word art style and then you can go down and add a shadow to it you can add reflections or glow um, it actually turns the existing text into a word art style now if I want to get rid of all of this and bring it back to the way it was you do have a clear formatting button it says clear all formatting um, on the uh, formatting toolbar 
click on that and automatically bring it back to the way it was. Get rid of all the formatting. Um, the other things that you have real quick is the paragraph, so you can change the um, spacing. But just um, three little shortcuts. Control two will, um, when you select your paragraph, will double space your paragraph. Control five will do a space and a half. Control one will do single spacing. So when you want to quickly space your um, paragraphs or the information in your document, you can use those shortcuts. The Shift F3, like I showed you before, turns it all into uppercase, turns it all into lowercase, turns it back into sentence case. Then you also have your alignment keys here, um, Control R. Um, whoops, I did Shift R, sorry. Control R will do right align. The default is left align, that's Control L. Control E is centering, so it centers every line in the paragraph. And Control J is justified. That's the one that does the justification so that it's even on both sides of the document. All right, so now um, I'm gonna go down here to the bottom of my document and I am going to start to type uh, today's, uh, the month of December. And if you remember this in other versions of Word that you would hit enter, and then as soon as I hit my space bar, it puts the current date in, I can hit enter again, and it would complete the date for me. Um, if you remember, you used to type, maybe when you used to type sincerely, you would get sincerely yours. And that was known as auto text. And auto text is actually, everybody goes, where did auto text go? Auto text has to do with automatic text. It's when you have um, text that you want to automatically have it put it in Word without you typing it all the time. It could be your company name. It can be the closings at the end of a letter. For instance, if I type sincerely, and let's say I type, you know, Mary Smith, and I put ABC company, and I put, you know, ABC, I'm going to put the, you know, ABC.com, and I put the, my phone number in. So let's say that at, at the end, you want to just, as soon as you start typing sincerely, you wanted to put this whole thing in for you. Where is auto text? Where did it go? Well, it actually is on the insert menu, and it's under what's called the quick parts gallery. When you click on the quick parts gallery, and you can see that there are some already in on this computer, but if you go down to auto text, then you can actually save this to the auto text gallery. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to select the text that you want saved. So I'm going to go highlight my closing here. Then on the insert ribbon, I'm going to go to the quick parts. I'm going to go down to auto text and then I'm going to say save selection to the auto text gallery. What I'm going to do is have it, you know, complete it for me um, so that when I start to type sincerely, this is going to come up. If you have a couple different closings that you use, you may want to give them different names. Um, but if you do, it has to be more than three characters. It's going to store it in the auto text gallery, which I'll show you where that is in a minute. And I'm just going to choose the, you know, and it's also going to save it as the normal template, meaning that this will be available in any document that you open, not just this one. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to hit my delete key. So now when I type sincerely, as soon as I type the fourth letter, it's going to come up. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to automatically complete that for me. I can also do that with paragraphs of information. I'm going to highlight this paragraph here. I'm going to go to quick parts, auto text, save the selection to the auto text gallery. I'm actually going to call it background. So when I type the word background, it's automatically going to come up. And so when I hit delete, I type background, comes up, I hit enter, it automatically puts it in for me. So auto text is automatic text that you want to quickly put in a document without having to type it every time. So you can see that there are things in here, but if I go to auto text, you'll see 
that the ones that I just added are in here. There's a little scroll bar here. Here's the one that I had, the signature. Here's the one with the background. And these are all stored in what's called the building block organizer. Now, if I go to auto text and right click on the one that I just created, you can see that I can insert it in the page header and the footer anywhere if I have sections in my document. But if I do organize and delete, it actually will show me where that is. So that if I wanted to delete this from the list, I could. And then here's my other, here's the other auto text entries that are in here. So they're in alphabetical order. And then I close it. And when you go to quick parts and you go back to auto text, now you'll notice that that auto text that originally was in there is now gone, the background. But I still have the sincerely. And you can also insert it that way too by just clicking on it again and inserting that way. So your auto text is under the quick parts gallery and it's in the building block organizer. So if I go to the building block organizer, there's my auto text. The also, the other thing later when we do graphics, I can show you that um, we can automatically put our graphics in there too. All right, so I need to move on. So I wanna talk about bullets real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type my, um, doing the um, tabs, I create bullets here. So I'm going to select my text. I'm gonna to go to the home ribbon and I can hit the bullet button and I get the basic bullet. If I click on the drop down arrow, you'll see the basic bullets that come with Word. Okay, they're fine, but I'm gonna go and create my own bullet. I'm gonna hit define new bullet. You can do the following. You can do bullets from symbols. I click on the symbol button and I'm going to change the symbols to, if you use the web things or the things, you will get um, symbols that are a little bit interesting. And I'm gonna choose the globe and hit okay. Then I'm gonna hit the font button because the font button is for the actual symbol color, not the color text. So I'm just gonna pick a color. I'm gonna increase the size of the bullet and hit okay. When I hit OK, now I have a little bullet, and you can if you want. You can move, use the indents to move that over. And you can see I have my bullets now. So the next time I want to use those bullets, they'll be right there for me. Um, so that's using the symbols as bullets. You can also go to define new bullet, go to picture. Now, one of the things that 2013 has, which is a little bit different than 10, is I can actually go and search my clip art, but I can go right online and um, search for graphics. So if I wanted to use this little graphic as a bullet, I can select it, hit insert, and it will actually download that little graphic as a bullet. And now I have the little snowman as a bullet um, in my document and the next time I want to use it, it's right there. This is great for things like your logos, um, whatever else you want to use for your bullet designs, you can and if I increase the size of the text. Now the thing about the pictures is that when you're working with the pictures, you're kind of stuck with the size of the picture that it gives you. You can't really adjust the graphic on there um, too much. So you've got your little your little graphics that you can use. You've got your numbers, your numbers, you can do numbers, letters, your automatic, you know, and if you want, you can say, um, find a uh, new format, go to font, get a different for format and color for your um, say letters. And then the next time you want to use it, it's right there for you. And finally, the other thing is the outlining. A lot of people have trouble with this, this outlining feature. I'm gonna click on the second option in the list library. And notice that it automatically numbered my text for me. But now I'm gonna hit tab, I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna hit my tab key. Or you can hit the indent button on the paragraph uh, section. 
And when you, you need to use the indents or the tabs in order for this to work. So now, if I say, okay, there's the clipboard in the home ribbon, there's the font section in the home ribbon, and under font, now I'm tabbing again, see how it's changing it automatically. So I can set my, um, make it bold, I can underline it, and then when I hit tab, now I'm going to do shift tab to take me back, or you can hit the uh, decrease indent button, and that would actually send that over um, and then I can type paragraph, and then if I hit the shift up again, now I can say, okay, now I'm going to talk about the insert ribbon. Notice that as I do that, how it automatically is changing the numbers underneath. So as I'm using the tab or shift tab or the indent or decrease indent, it's, this is what's changing the level of the outline as I click on it. Now. If I highlight this and change it to a different style, say this one, it's going to automatically update the style for me. And if you were doing this from scratch, let's say you were starting this from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and choose the outline. I'll choose the third one here. And then I'll type home. So I'm going to hit enter, hit tab, and then it's going to have, I'm going to type clipboard, then I'm going to type font, then I'm going to tab again so that I get that level in there. And I'm going to say underline. And I can say of underline. I'm going to do shift tab to take me back. Um, tab again. Then I can type paragraph. Enter, shift tab all the way back. And now I can start my levels. So you can see when you're working with the outlining, you have to use the tab keys to, to change those levels and make those levels work for you. But if you go in and add another level, like right here, if I hit enter, and I wanted to add, I get 1.3, and then everything just changes automatically for you. So this has to work with the indents or the tabs in order for it to be um, useful or successful for you. All right. Speaking of tabs, I'm going to go down here to the bottom, and I wanted to mention about tabs. A lot of times you notice you automatically have tabs in your document. But what I wanted to do is over on the far left side, when you have your ruler showing, you can see that you have that little L in that little box on the far left-hand side. That is a left indent tab. You can set those. I'm going to set by just clicking under the ruler. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to set a tab. I'm going to click here under the two and a half inch mark, and then I'm going to set one under the four. When I do that, I'm actually getting rid of the default tabs that are in here, and then I can just automatically tab to the ones that I created. So I'm going to type title, department, I'm going to go type she's a manager, um, she's in sales, I'm going to type John, he's a um, director, he's in marketing. And one more, Tom, he's the VP of accounting. All right, so now I have those tabs. I'm going to hit, I'm going to go underneath my list. Let's say that after you created this list, you need to move this over. You need to make sure that you highlight the entire list and then click on your tab and drag it over so that it moves the list where you want it. Because otherwise, if you didn't select the entire list, it would only move the line that you're on. Now, when I'm underneath my list, I'm going to get rid of my tabs by clicking on them and dragging them down into my um, document, and they disappear. And then my default tabs will come back automatically. You get half-inch default tabs automatically. But there's also the different types of tabs that you can create. For instance, if I click on this little L over here, I get an upside-down T. So I'm going to click on that underneath the one. Then if I click on that little button again, I get a backward L, which is actually a right align tab. If I click on it again, I get what's called a decimal tab. I click on it again, I get a bar tab. It's not the kind you think of. And then if I click on the little indents to get back to the L, I want to show you how these different tabs work. So I'm going to type Richard here. 
I'm going to type manager here. I'm going to type um, $50 here. So now what's happening is, if you see, the center tab is centering the text. The right align tab is lining the text up evenly on the right. And the decimal tab is automatically aligning the decimals so that they are um, lined up evenly. And then the bar tab on the right is making it so that I get a vertical line going down. So every time I hit enter, that, that bar tab is going to create a divider line going down in your document. Now, to get rid of those tabs, I went underneath my list again, because you don't want to be up here when you get rid of the tab, otherwise you're getting rid of the tab for that line. And I'm going to delete them by just clicking on them and dragging them into my document. Now, when I go back up here, though, those tabs that I had set for that line will appear. And when I click back up here in this group, those tabs that I had set will appear. So you can have multiple tab settings in your document, but a lot of times people always use the left align and don't know that they have other tabs that they can work with. The other types of tabs that you have in a document are what are called leader tabs. Now to get to the tab box, because that's another one that they hid, if you click on the little button to the right of paragraph, notice in the bottom left-hand corner it says tabs. I click on that. I'm going to set a leader tab at the three inch, no actually I'm going to put it at four. So I'm going to type the four inch mark. I'm going to make it a right align tab and I'm going to do a leader of um, number two that gives me the dots and I'm going to hit set. And I'll show you what this does in a minute. So I'm going to hit OK. So the leader means that when I tab from, from my beginning point to number four, I'm going to get dots all the way across. So I'm going to type the word introduction. As soon as I hit tab, I'm going to get my little leader tabs, and then I'm going to type page five. It's a right align tab, meaning that it's going to line up evenly on the right. So now when I type background, tab over, and type page 15, line up evenly on the right-hand side. So those types of tabs, that leader tab, I'm going to go ahead and um, now to get rid of it, if I want to get rid of it, is I'm going to go back to my little tab, drag it down, or I can go to tabs, and then I can also hit clear, or clear all if I have more than one tab set. Another type of leader tab that's useful is I'm going to set one at the three inch mark. It's also going to be right aligned, but I'm going to do number four and hit set. That's going to give me a solid line. I type name and hit tab, and then let's say I type address, hit tab, eight, tab, whoops, I did tab, city, tab. If you're doing a form and you want your lines to be evenly across and you don't want to have to hit your underline key to um, create an underline across, you can then use the leader tab to create the lines, then you can print your form and then they can fill it out for you. Um, but if you're typing on the text, if you have to type on the line, then you have to use the underline. But for a leader tab, a line leader tab, um, again, I went to paragraph, went to tabs, and I chose the number four option. Okay, so that's a little intro with tabs. Now, I am um, going to go to my document and this may run a tad over because we, we got started a little bit um, later, so maybe we can go an extra five minutes after this because there are a few things I want to show you. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert, and I want to go to um, cover page. So I'm going to click here on the cover page, and they have cover pages in here that you can use. I'm going to go ahead and pick the little slice style. So what it does is it adds a cover page to your document and then you can just click on it and you can type your text in there. I'm getting the little circle right now which tells me it's not responding. I think I may have run <laughs> I think it does freeze uh, for about a minute or so. so okay. Grab a cup of coffee.
Well, anyways, you can use the existing cover pages from the document, or you can create your own cover page. You can actually um, highlight the text that you want. All right, so I did get the cover page. But if you wanted to turn this into a cover page, you can select your text. You can go to cover page, and then you can save selection to the cover page gallery. And when you do that, then the next time you want to use that cover page um, on a document, you can click here, scroll down, and it would be listed towards the bottom of the screen. You would have that cover page that you could just add and use it. So if, instead of recreating it every time, um, you could use it, um, your own cover page. So trying to get back, it's giving me a run. That's okay, that happened at the end. <laughs> we can edit that out. The good, yeah, the good stuff. We want the good stuff in here. All right, so I'm going to have to relaunch it for I'm going to open up for it again. recovery okay good all right so now um, I wanted to go to insert you can also insert headers and footers like if I want to insert a header here and then if I want to insert a footer and insert footers you can insert fancier footers and headers than the normal the normal ones that you normally get um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a page break here so if I put a page break I'm gonna do control enter and now my background is on the third page and the first page I have. Now you notice my header and footer is also on my title page. So if I don't want that, I'm going to go ahead and double click on my header, my header um, ribbon, and I'm going to check different first page. And what that's going to do is that's going to take out the header. and the footer on the first page. In theory, if it was working. Right? Yeah, well, so, yeah. There we go. All right. So now on the first page, you notice it doesn't have it, but it does have it on the second and the third page. Graphics. I'm going to go to insert. I want to do pictures online. I'm going to do an online picture. I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm just going to do my little snowman again. Um, I'm going to choose this graphic. I'll choose this one. And I'm going to hit insert. It'll take that item in here. I can make it smaller if I want. When you're working with graphics in your document, um, if you're when you're on the formatting ribbon for the graphic, if you change the wrap text to through, then you can actually size your graphic, put your mouse in the middle, and then you can drag it around your document and just let your text wrap around the graphic for you. You can remove backgrounds from graphics. You can just change this and drag it out if you want more of the background to show. And then when you say keep changes, it'll take the background out, but apparently it took all the snowman out of there. So I'm just gonna undo and um, discard that, bring it back to the way it was. You can the color of the graphic, you can add stick effects to your graphic, you can put a border around your graphic, change the border color, and you can also select the graphic, go to insert, go to quick parts, and save that to your quick part gallery so that if you want to use that again in the future, it's right there for you. The other thing on the page layout tab, or I'm sorry, on design, in 2013 they now have a design tab, are what's called 
And if you do work with the themes, choose any of the themes, it will affect the colors on your document. It will also affect your graphics on the document. And if you go to your home ribbon and you click on the drop down arrow, it also affects the color choices in the drop down arrow. So it affects all the colors that are in your document. If I go back to design and I scroll back up to the top, the main, the one in the upper left hand corner, which is office, is the default colors. You can pick that. But in 2013, if you do pick different styles of theme, colors, and fonts, you can set those as a default to use in all your new documents so that it picks up those colors, like your company colors or things like that. And finally, the last thing that I want to show, there's so many things that I wanted to cut you that you can cover in Word, but these are some of the topics I decided to pick for today. If I go to insert and let's say that I have this website, I'm going to go back to my Word document. Then if I go to screenshot, I can actually bring in screen clippings from um, your like the internet or whatever screen you have. So I'm going to go to screen clip. It's going to bring up the screen that that I had behind my Word document. I'm going to select that logo. And it's going to put it in my document. Then I can do the wrap text to through. I can size it and move it around the document if I want. And if I wanted to, I could save that to the current parts gallery for future use. So. So I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you for participating. The time. Thank you for participating in today's first webcast session. I hope you found these tips useful and are able to utilize some of these tips when working with Word. If there are any questions that you have regarding what was covered today, please feel free to write them down and I will try to answer them. Otherwise, I look, we look forward to seeing you in our next session in January. Thank you and have a nice holiday.